Well, welcome rising juniors to the 2021-2022 course selections. So this has been a very interesting year. As you can see, we are here social distancing and wearing our masks. Um, wishing that we could be with you all in person, but we are excited about rolling out our course selections online. This will give everyone the opportunity to view course selection and to go back and view the course selections if you have any questions at all. We are also going to be hosting parent and student Q&As, and so there will be information attached to this video on when those times and when those days are. We are your academic counselors. I am Natalie Mauhealy, and I serve studio students with the last names A through L. And I am Karen Witham, and I serve students with the last name M through Z. So today, we want everyone to have the opportunity to view these course selections that we are rolling out for you. This will give you an opportunity to think through the different courses that you may be interested in taking um, next school year. Our attachments, um, Ms. Malhealy is going to talk through the attachments and everything that is included in those attachments. And so it is important that after you've viewed the video, that you do take time to go through each and every one of the attachments that we have here for you. Hi Caymans, as we go through this video, you'll see us reference numerous different important documents. One of the first important documents will be our graduation requirements. So on that page, there will be minimum graduation requirements versus A through G college bound requirements. We will go through the differences between these two plans on our presentation, but you will be able to access that document with all the other documents I'm going to talk through. You also will have a credit check sheet. So if you guys wanted to check where you are at with your credits currently and plan for what courses you wanna take in the future to make sure you stay on track for graduation, that will be included. There will be directions on how to access your transcript on Pathways to review your prior credits and um, see if there's any course work that you might want to retake or courses you need to, add, to plan to take later. You also will have access to the course selection forms which specify all of the courses we plan to offer for juniors next school year along with the Google link form to submit those courses and then lastly, there will be a course catalog with all the descriptions of the courses we plan to offer for next school year. All of these documents will be included with the email that went out with this course selection information. It will be available on Schoology and also available in the Monday Weekly News for CAHS. Also, lastly, on the very last slide, we will include all the various dates and times we, have, we will be offering parent Q&As. And they're specified by grade level, but we recommend that you all come out, ask any questions you might have, feel free to reach out to us, and we are here to help you. So as you've just heard, we have put together everything that you need for course selections for 2021-2022. After viewing our video and after taking a look at the attachments, we hope that you feel well prepared to make those course selections for the following school year. We are here to help. Keep in mind, February the 9th, you want to have everything turned in by that date. And we will be and are available for um, virtual uh, meetings. And those times, as Ms. Malhealy just pointed out, are posted and will be posted and attached to this video. So look forward to seeing you soon again. And we are, like you, hoping for a really great 2021-2022 school year. See you, Caymans. Bye, Caymans. All right, rising juniors, we are going to start our course selection and planning presentation. And we're going to start out by going through the requirements for uh, graduation. So uh, there are a total of 30 um, credits required for social science. Those 30 credits include world history, US history, government economics, four years of English required, three years of math are required. All students must finish with at least math two. Math three, if you are wanting to be A through G, is a minimum math requirement. Then at least two of our sciences, although three years is recommended. Foreign language, two years of foreign language are required of the same foreign language. 
on a A through G plan and just one on a standard plan. Then on visual and performing arts, all students need at least one uh, visual and performing arts course. 50 electives on a non A through G plan on our um, standard plan and then on our A through G plan 40. And with those 40 electives, 10 of the electives must be a G elective. Everyone needs a total of two years of physical education. And then everyone who attends classical all four years is required to turn in a total of 150 hours or 37.5 hours each semester for a total of 10 credits. All of those courses um, tally up to a total of 220 credits. Now, the UC required A through G courses we've talked through. It's that two years required for history, social science, four years required for English, three years for math, two lab sciences, language other than English has to be at least two years of the same language, visual and performing arts, and then elective requirements. And again, one elective must be a G elective. So that's important to note. On this A through G plan, um, and our A3G courses do all have a P next to them, and that's important to note as you're trying to choose A3G coursework. Most of our coursework is A3G. This would be the flow of English. So for most of you, you will have hopefully taken English 1, English 2, um, and now you'll be looking at taking either English 3 or an AP language um, course, language or lit. We do want to encourage everyone to go ahead and download from Pathways your transcript when you do this course selection. If you have your transcript, then you're able to go through and mark off the courses that you've taken. That helps you then figure out what it is you're still needing. But our juniors will all mostly all need to take an English course or an AP language course. Social science, again, you're gonna check your transcript to see that you've taken world history. This year, many of you will be choosing U.S. history or AP U.S. history. Next year, senior year, is when you consider picking that government and economics. Science, if you haven't already taken bio and chemistry, we recommend that. Um, those are required courses and physics for, for our junior year. So that would be something many of you would be choosing physics junior year as either an honors or a regular as well as possibly taking an AP bio or maybe holding off on that until senior year. Math, depending on where you're at with math, many of you will have taken math one, math two, some will have taken math three already, but if not, you're going to want to take math three. Those of you that started at a higher level of math will then take um, one of our higher math courses that we do offer, and we'll talk through that in just a minute. You must, everybody must have at least three years while in high school of math. Four is recommended by the colleges. World and foreign languages. <clears throat> Again, on this plan, two years of the same language is required for admissions to the Cal State universities or the UC. However, they do recommend that you go on and take more, but it is not a requirement. So our choices at classical are that you've taken Spanish, or French. Some of you that are juniors have maybe completed Spanish 4. If you have, then you might want to choose AP Spanish Lang. Otherwise, if you started with your languages as a sophomore, and that would be true for many, then you're going to be choosing Spanish 3-4 and or French 3-4. Visual and Performing Arts. Here's a listing of all of our Visual and Performing Arts courses. Um, you are required to have at least one VAPA, and the VAPA must be an A through G VAPA on an A through G graduation plan. Any extra courses that you've taken in this area will count towards elective credit. So that's important to keep in mind. On an A through G plan, four electives are required for a total of 40 credits. And again, one must be a G elective. PE, everyone needs those two years of PE. If for some reason you have missed a PE or didn't get a passing grade in a PE, then as a junior, you are going to want to choose an elective PE to fulfill that, that credit requirement. 
Community service, everybody needs 150 hours of community service equaling 10 elective credits. You can turn in those elective community service credit hours on your Schoology account, so please log in those hours there. We recommend that students do that each year. That equates to 37.5 hours each for every school year um, that you are enrolled. Together, this tallies up to a total of 220 credits at graduation. Now, on a sequence two plan, that non-A through G plan, standard plan, you would have, should have taken already and passed English one, two, and possibly now then be looking to go into English three. English four, what happens senior year? The sequence of social studies, most of you should have had world history and are now taking and signing up for US history. When you're a senior, you'll take that government and economics. Sciences, again, hopefully you've taken bio and chemistry, and now as a junior, you're selecting to take physics. If you haven't done either bio or chemistry, though, you do want to make those choices. Math, so again, we talked about how three years of math are required. Perhaps a student on a standard plan may have started out with math foundations. If that's the case, then math foundations should have been taken freshman year then, math one, and so this year you're signing up and taking that math two. So again, three years though required and you must have at least completed math two for graduation. World language, you can certainly sign up and should sign up for Spanish one if you haven't already taken a language or French. Only one um, year of a language is required. However, we do recommend still that students sign up and take those, those two um, years of language. Sequence two, you must take a visual and performing arts. It doesn't necessarily have to be a G elective, although most of our visual, visual and performing arts courses are A through G approved. Five electives are required on this plan and not four as on the other plan, the A through G plan. And so you need a total of 50 credits in this area. Again, here's the PE. If you haven't met your PE requirements, be sure and sign up for an elective PE to fulfill that requirement of 20 PE credits or physical education credits. Community service remains the same, 150 hours for 10 elective credits. Again, please go on your Schoology accounts to log in those hours if you haven't done that already. That's important for graduation. And um, as soon as you can get that done, it, it, it's very helpful for both you and for us. Again, the same required number of credits for graduation, 220. So the differences between these two plans Math three is not required on a sequence two plan, standard plan, non A through G plan. Only one year of language is required on a sequence two plan, non A through G plan. You get an additional elective on a non A through G plan, and the electives doesn't have to meet that G requirement. No grades of D are allowed on a sequence one A through G plan you are required to retake grades of G on that plan, on that A through G plan. That's not the case on a standard plan or sequence two plan. So now here is the sequence one A through G plan that we're gonna just kind of go through quickly. Most of you should have had, and we'll look at this and should have taken, look at your transcript or flap back into that. English one, biology, should have taken a math and maybe a language and certainly that PE. This is just an example schedule for really for our freshmen who are new to the idea of accelerated courses. Hopefully you all are feeling good about that, know how these accelerated courses work. And, um, and so this is just something for you to take a look at. And again, as you're checking off what you've taken on your, your transcript to see what's been fulfilled. 10th grade here is an outline of the 10th grade coursework that you should have taken in 10th grade, might have taken in 10th grade. And again, we're, this is just a standard sequence one course selection for a, a 10th grader. And now here is a standard sequence course planning for an 11th grader. So many of you then will be choosing either English 3 or AP English, US History or AP US History. And then any number of maths. You might actually be choosing a math two, a math three, four, or one of our calculus offerings. 
You might be choosing a physics. Many of you will be choosing a physics. You can choose there either honors or regular. And some may choose an AP bio. Those that still need a VAPA could certainly look at choosing a VAPA and making certain too that they have that additional G elective. So this is important for this group of students that this would be the coursework that would be typical for students as they make those, those choices for, for next school year. Here's a rollout of a sequence one grad plan for 12th grade, some things that you might look at. You can come back to these slides to take a look if you're kind of trying to plan out for senior year. But again, we put this up for, for course planning. So now we come back to that sequence two, non-A through G standard plan. These might have been courses taken in the ninth grade. Again, please print that transcript out, have that ready from your Pathways account and just check off the things that you've taken and, or might still be needing. Again, here's a standard example of a ninth grade schedule. 10th grade, these might be courses you took in the 10th grade. If not, if you're seeing some courses on here that you think you would still need, then we want you to go ahead and make those choices for next school year when you are a junior. This is the schedule that we've come up with for juniors as a standard schedule. Um, English 3, U.S. History, Math 2, Physics, and then perhaps electives on this plan. So again, most of you um, that will be, that are rising juniors, these would be courses that you want to check to see that you've either taken or will have scheduled to take. And here then is the grad plan sequence two for 12th grade. Again, just putting out something very general um, to see that students in going into 12th grade would have what they would need. So important notes, the VAPA, G electives, and any electives can be taken at any time during high school. And again, you're just choosing these courses based on your academic load and maybe how heavy or how light that is. Community service, again, just note that that is the same on both plans. 150 hours total is required. College tips. It is important that those hours get turned in. This is helpful for everyone and very helpful for students as they apply to college. We also want to encourage rising juniors to create a profile for themselves on bigfuture.org or on Naviance. Many have college questions, where they might want to go to school, what the colleges need for, from them in terms of courses to have been taken for admissions. This is your, a great resource. This, this is your starting place to begin looking at colleges and begin narrowing down that search. Also want to let our rising juniors know that every fall we have a college planning evening and we roll out all kinds of great information that's really important to juniors as you now start looking and thinking more and more about college. SAT, ACT will roll out some good information as we learn more for SAT, ACT requirements as well as dual credit. We definitely do have agreements that exist between us and Palomar Maricosa, that's good news. Um, good news because as long as you are a high school student, these courses are free to you. Um, these are, however, college level courses and they do go on your permanent college record when you take these courses in high school. So for that reason, we really recommend that it is A and B students that sign up for this coursework we will have concurrent enrollment packets available in our front office. Um, this is true for Palomar. Miracosta actually has students do this all directly through them, and then they send the counselors, they send Ms. Mauhili and myself, those dual credit um, forms, and then we sign off and approve those. So next off, Ms. Mauhili is going to actually talk through all the attachments that we have um, with this video, she is going to talk through those attachments, walk you through how you're actually doing course selection, and we'll go over the resources that we have available. Um, before um, I sign off, I want to again um, put a date out to you to mark on your calendar. She'll be bringing this, bringing this up too, but February the 9th is definitely a time where you want to have everything decided on and turn in those course selections. That's the due date. We will have parent, student, counselor Q&A times 
here we have them listed. These times and dates that we have are grade specific. However, that being said, if you another time perhaps works better for you to attend, we want you to come. So the important thing is we want all of your questions answered. We want you to have lots of choice. We have designed them though around specific grades, but we can certainly speak to any questions that you would have and be available to help with any questions um, and hope then to provide you with those answers that are needed. But you have everything you need for course selection. All the information um, is up, posted, and ready. So now Ms. Mauhealy is gonna talk through those attachments. All right, guys, so when all of the course selection information was email emailed out, and you can also find this information on Schoology under your cohort page, um, you'll have your specific grade level designed virtual packet that's available online with all the important attachments and information you might need to make your best choices for next school year for your classes. So I'm just gonna quickly overview some of the important attachments we have included. Um, one of the first ones, first um, documents is the step-by-step -step instructions for students. So we included a page called the credit check sheet right here. And when um, Mrs. Witha mentioned, you know, make sure you have your transcript, which you can get via Pathways, and that's included um, in the attachments as well, a link to Pathways. You can do a little credit check for yourself to make sure you're on track, depending on the graduation requirements you are aiming to meet. So on the left side here, we have minimum graduation requirements, and this is for students who are, you know, maybe, maybe planning to go to community college first, get their general ed done, and then transfer um, to a four-year university. And the right side for students, um, trying to keep all options open for a four-year university and um, trying to meet A through G requirements for the UCCSU schools. So um, how you would do it is we have a little key right here. Um, you can put circles for um, the first portion of a course and the second portion of course that you took and completed on your transcript. There's always an A portion and a B portion to a course. So um, you can go ahead and circle if you've taken and completed that. Um, courses that you're currently in this spring as a sophomore, you can put a triangle on those and then, you know, X's for the courses you plan to take senior year. And then that can give you a good idea as to where you are falling on um, your credits for graduation. Um, and if you run into, you know, any issues or want to ask any questions, we have those Q&A times you guys are welcome to join. And you can also reach out um, and ask any questions as well. And we're happy to help you guys with that. So that's that credit check sheet. Um, the next step, so you do your credit check, use your transcript, and then you can review the graduation requirements um, in the packet here, right here, um, minimum and college bound requirements. And if you find that you are credit deficient on something and have a question about that, please reach out to your counselor and they can help. We also have a four year course sequence sheet, which was included as well right there. This just might be what a typical student in your grade level might be taking. Some find it helpful. So if you wanna review that, there is that. Down here is the course catalog. This will be really helpful when considering courses for next school year because it has course descriptions and you might want to look up on um, look up information about a course before you decide to take it, want to look at the prerequisites. Um, use that when making your choices so you can be informed and make sure you're making the best um, fit choices for you. And then lastly, we have a club list that you might want to go through. This is just a list of our clubs for this school year and might be offering next school year if you wanted to to look that over and see if you might want to join something. Um, and so the next part will be the actual, um, right here, the, sorry, it is the course selection form for your grade level. So right here will be the course selection form. And this will list all the classes that are geared for um, juniors for next school year. You can look at this to get a good idea of what's being offered, but you will actually submit your courses on the Google Form link, which I will show you next. So this shows you all the class offerings. The top, um, the right box, the box on the right side of each course lists the prerequisites to go into a course. So be paying attention to that, please, as you pick courses to make sure it's an appropriate fit for you. All right, lastly, this is where you will submit your course selections for the school year. So you, um, 
will be submitting this by Tuesday, February 9th, and that's a very important date to remember. Please make sure everyone submits their course selection by then. You'll go ahead and enter your email address, put your last name first, and then your first name. That's important because we use this when sorting. And then your parent's email address here. So go ahead and enter your parents' email address and then what grade you will be in next school year. So these are our rising juniors. So go ahead and mark off junior and it will bring you to the next page. So this, you know, careful considerations, please read through this, um, you know, lets you know what typical seniors are taking. The P is what stands for college prep. AP is advanced placement. Um, and you are signing up for classes for the full year. So keep that in mind. And then you will go through, um, Here's your five digit student ID number. You can get this off of your student ID card or out of your pathways portal on your dashboard there. Um, next, the English class you will take. So you'll go through each box and just go ahead and make your selection. So for English, you know, most students will be taking English three or possibly AP English. Um, I doubt many will have met this requirement. Um, Math, you'll just be moving on to the next level of math. So let's say you're moving on to math three or math two, you go ahead and mark that. Everybody is at a different place with math. So please mark off which math you will be um, taking as a junior. Um, social science, um, you know, US history or AP US history. If you've happened to have met this requirement um, or if you need to retake world history, you can write this in the box or you can say I've already met this requirement, but keep in mind you do need three histories to graduate. Um, foreign language, um, some students might be needing to take care of their foreign language now or are moving on to AP Spanish. This will depend on where you are at with that requirement. So go ahead and mark off what applies to you or if you've already met the requirement, you can put that there. Science class, um, depending on where you're at with science, many juniors might be taking physics or honors physics. So go ahead and mark off um, at, as you pay attention to prerequisites. And please note that there will be updates to this um, for next school year. So we don't have all this information yet. So when this goes live, this might look a little different for you and pay attention to that there. Um, or you may have already met your life and physical science requirement and you can mark that box off if that's the case. Here is visual and performing arts. Um, you'd go ahead and pay attention if you are trying to meet the A through G college bound requirements. You wanna pick a visual and performing arts with a P if you're trying to meet um, an A through G approved VAPA or a G elective. So you can mark, um, choose one of those with a P. You might wanna just take extra. Um, and then you would go ahead and mark that off. I've already, you know, if you've already met the requirement, you can mark that as well. And then here are elective options, same thing. Go ahead and mark off what applies to you. Um, or if you've met your elective requirement, you could mark that, but most juniors, I believe, are still trying to meet some of those. Um, and here is the question about, are you willing to take any class zero period? This is a very important question as Lori Fletcher, our guidance technician, is scheduling classes. This helps with students who are wanting to end their day sooner, um, might play a sport and, um, need to not have a fourth period or, you know, all those types of situations. So if you are willing and able to take a class zero period, please mark yes. And if you're absolutely not able to, please mark no. Um, and we'll try and schedule you appropriately. Here's the special circumstances box. So this is more if you um, need to let us know of a scheduling concern, you can write this in the box and we do our best to accommodate those schedule requests. Um, for example, we have some students who drive their younger, younger siblings to school, so they need their schedules to align with each other. Um, or you might have a job and you're needing to end your day early, or you might actually want a period two, three, four. So any of those types of things you can write in this box, and depending on the classes you pick and availability, um, we do try to accommodate those, but please keep in mind that there's no guarantee. And then lastly, here's the sports. We use this as an interest list. So if you are interested, you can go ahead and mark off what you're interested in. It doesn't mean you're necessarily committing to a sport. And then lastly, here's the contract. You guys will wanna read carefully through this contract and um, keep in mind the minimum amount of credits to stay enrolled um, and everything like that. And then you guys will electronically sign and submit your parents and you. And then again, you'll put in your parent email address for confirmation. And um, one last note I wanted to make, 
was please pay attention to that. If you already submit your course selection, please do not submit it again. If you have a change you want to make, you will email Mrs. Fletcher at lfletcher at classicalacademy.com and she will make the change to your original submission. We don't want duplicates. So please keep that in mind after you've completed your course selection. All right, well, we hope this presentation was really helpful for everyone. And we want to again invite you to come to our parent and student Q and A's we will be offering. You can refer to those dates and the information that was posted in regards to course selection and in our presentation we offered. And we look forward to seeing you guys there and helping answer any questions that you might have. We hope you have a great junior year next school year. Well, hello and greetings. Uh, my name is Mr. Holtz and um, I teach English at Classical Academy. Um, I've uh, been a teacher for 15 years and uh, I love books and I like reading. Not because I like the act of reading, but because uh, reading changes my mind, uh, <laughs> literally. And uh, so it can for you too. Um, I, on the side, I teach a survey of classical literature. Uh, this is uh, kind of a great books course. We've, uh, for the last couple of years, we've been working through some of the great uh, texts of Western literature from ancient Greece all the way up to uh, now we're into, what are we into? Oh, Plato, Aristotle, those kinds of things. Take a look, see. Check out some of these titles. And if you're interested, this course is for you. It's an elective course. It runs year-round. And we read a lot of good stuff and have great conversations. So join me if you did. Hola, I'm Prof. Hegler and I teach AP Spanish at Classical Academy High School. AP Spanish Language and Culture is your chance to take your Spanish speaking, listening, reading, and writing skills to the next level. Spanish is spoken every day in class and less emphasis is on grammar while we focus our time on learning and talking about the culture, history, politics, art, and music of the Spanish-speaking world. We cover six themes, including global challenges, science and technology, contemporary life, personal and public identities, family and communities, and beauty and aesthetics. Our class size is small. This year we have 12 students, so this means plenty of one-on-one -on -one interaction with your teachers and classmates. So sign up for AP Spanish and be prepared to be inspired. Well, hello, Caymans. I am Mr. Iker, and I'm here to answer the question, should I take AP Stats? And I'm here to say, yes, <laughs> you should take AP Stats. How I feel about statistics, I'm Michael Scott, and Jim Halpert is statistics. I love statistics, and I would love to share my love of statistics with you so that by the end of the course you're giving statistics a really big hug. What will you learn in statistics? Well, we'll take a voyage through many different types of statistical studies and analyses and questions like should I trust this political poll? What principles are considered when developing drugs in the medical field? Is there an association between chocolate consumption and winning the Nobel Prize? Can the sense of smell be used to diagnose Parkinson's disease? How to pass the AP exam and other skills that you can use in the workforce. AP Stats is a math class with very little math. So you win the jackpot by taking AP Statistics. And who can sign up for AP Stats? You do not have to be a math ninja to take AP Stats. You need to have completed Math 3 with a C or better, be willing to read and talk and share and consider, keep up with assignments because after all it is an AP class, so there are assignments that you have to do. And you can take Math 4 and AP Calc concurrently if you're really mathy and want to do both, and know that an A in the class counts as a 5.0 and a B as a 4.0 like other AP classes. But really, ultimately, why take AP Statistics? Well, there's a slew of college majors that require statistics, and this isn't the total list. I ran out of space, so here's the rest. 
So I hope to see you soon. If you have questions, here's my email, or you can message me on Schoology. See you next year. Hey, <laughs> hi, I'm uh, David Bauer. How objects move. What if it's moving in a straight line? You can predict the motion of any object if you understand the basics of physics. Analyzing forces, like the force pushing forward on this car. And the force of friction, figuring out why things move or why they stay where they are <laughs> on a circular path. The Earth spinning. How much force is required to keep you from flying up into outer space? I let it go. It comes back. Energy is conserved. I could use that kinetic energy to do work on some bowling pins. Dude. Why is it that when he inhales helium that his voice changes? 400,000 volts. It will not harm you. The flow of electricity is like the flow of water through a, short pipe. a long pipe. A narrow pipe. A wide pipe. And you'll be able to understand things on a level that makes you scary smart. Scary smart. <laughs> Smarter about how things move, why things move, things moving in circular motion, gravity, energy, momentum, waves, electricity, electric circuits. Wow. You will be steady smart. By the time you leave physics, I hope you'll join me.